What were your biggest takeaways when you sat down with Dwayne? His understanding of the protections, uh, coverages, his ability to communicate. You know, obviously, as you guys watched it, uh, he's concise with his language. I mean, he can, in a few sentences, he can describe what he wants to describe. No wasted words. Uh, the protection thing jumps out at me because every time in this, I think that there's different versions of the piece. I'm not sure watch but on the long version he, every time we talk about a route he would start with protections and that that's unusual I think and especially when I asked him about it he said when I was in high school I did nothing with protections I didn't know what was going on but Ryan Day who's at who was, who was his position coach at Ohio State at the time they spent all the offseason learning protections and talking about it so that that was impressive he's easy to like he's got a great personality he's not very outgoing I mean he's not uh, you know, Trace McSorley, the other quarterback in the Big Ten, totally different personality. Um, so his his knowledge about the game and the way he could communicate really impressed me the most. What do you think Haskins' biggest hurdle is going to be as he tries to adapt to pro football as opposed to playing at Ohio State? I always think the off-the-field stuff is the hardest for a college guy when he leaves high school. Uh, uh, pro guy when he leaves college. I mean, I can't imagine the media scrutiny he's going to be under. That, you know, if you will, you know, don't read everything that's ever said about, I mean, he's going to throw a pick, right? He's going to make a bad decision. He's going to fumble the ball. And he's going to have a lot of really good plays, and the focus might be on the mistakes, especially early. So I, I, I think that's the the biggest adjustment. I do think for the first time in the history of college and state football, the offenses are trickling up instead of down. We've always taken ideas from the NFL. Nowadays, with the spread in college and high school, that's who the quarterbacks are. They're not pocket quarterbacks. They're not option quarterbacks. I think the mental jump may be less nowadays than it was a generation ago. Because you see, And I haven't seen the Redskins play, so I don't know if this is true with them but you see more pro teams play in the college game offensively than ever before. It's always been the other way around. What, what about calling a play from, you know, from the huddle? In the huddle? He has a that, and, you know, we're, we're not football guys, but we'll have sometimes the guys come in here and they'll recite a play for us, and it's like Chinese. I can't imagine doing that for the first time at the NFL level. I know how difficult that must be to learn. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I hadn't thought about that. I think that's a great point. That, that may be the most difficult on-the-field thing to do mm-hmm. because you're right. I, I mean, we, the college kids aren't in the huddles. The verbiage, there's the clocks are different. You've got the communications in the helmets and so on and so forth. So that, that may be one of his biggest on-the-field challenges. And I, I agree. Those guys that you I, – I, you know, I've, I've watched a little bit of the NFL. I don't watch a lot of, a lot of it, but when, I, when, I, when you do hear those type of – pieces on TV where you hear the communications, they're, they're very lengthy. And I, my guess is you're right. That's going to be a huge challenge. What about taking uh, snaps from center and the footwork and that sort of thing? Is that going to be something that will be a little easier for him? A little or no? Yeah, I think so. You know, because, you know, obviously that's something you can work on now. And, and, and think about it. There's, there's, there's not a lot of interaction except with the center. The, the point about the signals, you're in the huddle, everyone's looking at you. All you do on every play and all 11 defenders on every play, and now you have to recite this very long verbiage play with everyone looking at you. And some of those guys are 27, 28 years old, and yeah. they expect a lot out of you. With the, with the center, I think, is a, is a physical mechanic that can be – quickly yeah, just, just these guys ability to process information know where everybody's supposed to be where everyone's going to be on every single play it's overwhelming I know for me I could never do it in my lifetime and to expect a kid to do it one year out of college I mean you know one year of college experience it's just mind-blowing to me but yet guys do do it they pull it off it shows you how smart they are it, it is and it, it also shows you the, the way young people learn nowadays you, you know the, it, it's not necessarily uh the books, it's, it's having the eyes wide open and, and, and the video games and the way they, they're, they're, they're learning mm-hmm. and the way they learn how to communicate. Actually, there's so many things, 
because I, I think, in a certain extent, everyone's learning visually now more than any other way. And so, but it's still going to be an unbelievable challenge. I mean, you know, that, you described it as well as you could describe it. That, that it's, it's almost overwhelming when you think about what you just said. Yeah. You know, you cover the Big Ten for the Big Ten Network, <clears throat> and there hadn't been a Big Ten quarterback draft in the first round for many, many years. What stood out about Haskins beyond his knowledge of protections, which you talked about earlier, what stood out about him in general? Well, he appears to be a really good teammate. There was one part of that again when I said, why did you scramble here? looks like you may have had a little bit more time in the pocket. He said the offensive line hadn't had a sack yet. They were talking about it on the sidelines. It was a goal of our offensive line all during the week not to have any sack against the Don Brown blitzing defense. I didn't want him to have a sack. So instead of waiting and possibly being sacked, I just took off. So that sounded like a good teammate to hmm. me. Uh, and so that was impressive. But his arm, I, I mean, what, what, changed, what, what, what changed from JT to Dwayne Haskins in the Ohio State offense is Dwayne's ability to throw the ball vertically. And so he's got a terrific touch. Uh, you, you also notice when he's in the pocket, he, his eyes never go to the protection. His eyes are always in the coverage. And a lot of times, especially, no one, no one lets anybody hit the quarterback in practice, right? So when you get into a game, if you're worried about the pressure, and if you're worried about getting hit, your eyes go, instead of to the coverage, to the pass rush. His eyes never went there. His eyes always went downfield into the secondary. And, you know, it wasn't like it was practice. He wasn't protected in the games. And, again, this is a guy who started for one year, uh, and yet, you know, the being the quarterback for the Redskins will, will be overwhelming at times. I don't see how it can. Um, yeah, we've kind of gone around the room a few times and talked about when we expect Dwayne to start. Some guys think he should start just because, you know, why not? You know, you got Case Keenum and Colt McCoy. There's a lot of pressure on Jay Gruden and the staff. I mean, they've only made the playoffs once since he was hired. So, But they also had bad luck because Alex Smith broke his leg. So they're kind of forced to go out and get a quarterback here in the first round, forced to maybe play him a little earlier. What do you think about that? Case Keenum, you know, he wasn't great last year, but he, he threw 22 touchdowns, just nine picks two years ago with the Vikings. He wasn't horrible. What do you think? Uh, you know, the, these are decisions that uh, coaches go through. Now, I've never been through this as a, as a NFL coach, obviously, but, you know, as a college coach, you're in a position where uh, you've got a young talent. They expected you to win all your games, your third year of your contract. You don't think the kid is necessarily ready. But if you don't win six games, they're going to fire you. And so if I don't play him, <laughs> all, all I do is hand off uh, the next coach, uh, a, a guy that's going to turn it around for him. So there's got to be some parallel in the NFL to – he has all the good reasons to start Dwayne. He has all the good reasons to let him sit for a little bit. But one of the reasons that's going to be part of that decision is my, am, am I going to get fired if I don't win a certain amount of games and i got a first-round draft at quarterback and I've got him standing on the sidelines. And if I don't play him and I get fired and he becomes a star for the next guy they hire, I should have started him, even though he wasn't ready. So, you know, it's crazy to say this, but you don't always make the decision that's best for the player if you're under extreme pressure, job security-wise, you do say, "What the heck? What do I have to lose?" I'm, you know, mm-hmm. if I don't get if I don't get this thing turned around this year, I'm not going to coach this guy another year. So uh, where that fits in the, I know I know I felt that in, in college football. I can't imagine that a, that a head coach in the NFL doesn't feel the same pressure. Mm-hmm. 